Good morning, beloved saints. Hope you're having a great day. I'm trying to figure out here if my volume is all the way up. Every time, like, I, I didn't even restart the computer, right? I come back and I check my input volumes back down to 24% now. There it is. That's better. Hello, hello, hello. Is that better? Yeah, every time. If it goes to, like, the computer goes to sleep for a few hours, I come back, input volume stays down. Even though I keep changing the settings back to like 90. So, oh, yeah, I did birthday nails, birthday nails. See, got a candle on the cake. <laughs> I am going to continue my full armor of God discussion this week. Uh, let's look at our daily dose of the gospel message for the week. And it is about Ephesians 6. The full armor of God. I'll go ahead and read the verse again. I did that in the first one on Monday. Wherefore, this is Ephesians 6, uh, starting at 13, I think to 18. <clears throat> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore. And the first thing was having your loins girt about with truth which was a picture of them, you know, they tuck in that tunic thing they had, and it was a picture of being ready or prepared. And we talked about that Tuesday. And so the next piece of armor is having on the breastplate of righteousness. So stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That's preparation and readiness. And having on the breastplate of righteousness so we know that man's righteousness says all of our righteousnesses plural are as filthy rags and we know what that word is it's a disgusting word and i won't say what it is but it's not just rags you clean the house with that is how our good works look to god jesus said without him you can do nothing so unless we're in Christ, we can't even do anything good. That's why I laugh when people think we're uh, uh, our works are helping us get saved because at the end, he divides the sheep from the goats and we're judged according to our works. Uh, yeah, except if you're not in Christ and you're trusting in you, you don't have any. You've got to be in Christ. So... This righteousness must be greater than that of the scribes and Pharisees. Now, when Jesus would have said this to the nation of Israel, to the populace, they would have been shocked. <gasps> you, you mean we have to be stricter than them at keeping the law? Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, the disciples got it, finally. What's the law's purpose? It's a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. It all points to Jesus so that we get to the one that gives us true righteousness. It is to make us all guilty. So we see our need for him. Finally, they ask, well, who then can be saved? Ah, finally. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, the only way your righteousness is greater than the scribes and Pharisees. It, notice it says greater. They're not getting any either. Even though they tithe on their herb garden, literally, 10%. They're little, you know, little things in the windowsill. Got to cut 10% of that off. Yep, legalistic to the letter. Heart, heart is wicked. They can't see that. The whole point of that, our flesh is sin. If your eye causes you to sin, plug it out. Does your hand cause you to sin? Cut it off. What are you going to do about a heart? Can't walk around without that. And that's wicked too. Deceitful above all things. So, we need to see that 
in us, that is in our flesh, like Paul says, dwelleth no good thing. And this righteousness that we need, this breastplate of righteousness, this protects our heart. This protects our heart. It's God's righteousness. Now, in scripture, God imputes his righteousness on us. That's why David says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That means put sin on your account. He's not going to attribute that to you. He's not counting it against you. He removed it. Remember in Acts, it says that he turned us from our, our iniquity. He took it away, moved it out away from us. So, this righteousness comes when we trust. This is about believing that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection gave us everlasting life. We're not trusting anything else. Just what he did. He reversed Adam's curse, which was death. The wages of sin was death, and he died, and he paid that wage. Done finito. Just like Adam Everyone born after him, all die. We were born mortal. Going to die from the day we're born. Didn't do anything wrong. We're born in that condition. In sinful flesh. Corruptible flesh. Mortal. And we don't do anything right. Because the second Adam reverses it. He restores immortality. Now because he's done that. We're a new creation. We're a new creature in Christ. And we need to know we're completing him and our identity in order to walk that truth out. This is why people keep saying, oh, you just love your sin. You, you, you don't get it. You don't get it. That person died. The Lord turned my iniquities from me. Why am I going to go back to what a dead man does? That's my flesh. And we will struggle and have this battle until this body of death is gone. But now we're equipped because we have the Holy Spirit and he guides us. So this righteousness is God's. When you trust the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you're saying, I'm trusting him. He's why I have everlasting life. He counts that faith. As righteousness. So he imputes God's perfect righteousness on each and every one of us. That is the breastplate of righteousness. Now, practical righteousness is also necessary. Because if you walk around in condemnation in the old man, your heart is vulnerable to the lie of the enemy that it's not done you're not really saved you leave yourself vulnerable so practical righteousness is wise as well as it's the truth of who we already are in Christ so let's walk in that walk in newness of life because we are alive unto righteousness and that's practical we're righteous positionally permanently because of what Jesus has done not because of what we do because we are righteous walk righteous so you don't act like it to become it you already are that so act like it you see the difference there so this protects our vulnerable place the heart if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Just because you have a feeling, because a feeling comes from a thought and your thinking's wrong, it doesn't mean it's true. We can tell ourselves anything. The enemy can tell us stuff. We can believe it and have feelings because of it. It doesn't make it true. It feels real, but it's not true. So, this protects our heart. It protects it. 
God's positional permanent righteousness because we know in who we have believed. We know our Redeemer lives and we're going to see him face to face. So this protects our heart from fear, from condemnation, from deception. That's what we put on. And I'm going to give you some verses here. Proverbs 21, 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. You know, it's the principle of reaping and sowing. It's not a law because you can, uh, you can sow generosity and kindness and still reap ugliness from people. It happens from time to time. Good things happen to bad people. And bad things happen to good people. It's just the way it is in this world. But overall, it's sin that brings those devastating uh, situations in our lives. And if you avoid those, life overall in general is much better. It's pre preserving us from those terrible consequences. James 3.18 says, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Proverbs 14.34 Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. You find a nation that is on top of its game. It is wealthy. It has a great military. It is world famous. Watch what made them fall. Every time it's sin. The king is a is just debaucherous. Like Caligula. Ugh, I can't even tell you the stories with that guy. Lunatic. And he was just given over to and he was worse and worse. It's like Nero killed his own mom. It's just these people are wicked, man. But then you'll see like Sodom and Gomorrah. You see Babylon. All these pagan nations sacrificing their children. We know they were involved in bestiality. All kinds of sick things. Downfall of a nation. Every time. Every time. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Matthew 5.20 is the one I talked about earlier. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. In no wise. It's supposed to be King, King James. It says it is. You won't. It's got to be greater than theirs. So they're not getting in either. And we know how we get that. All right. Here's a great verse that explains the imputed righteousness. We, we know it besides Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, right? That's imputed righteousness. But if you listen to Ephesians, it's, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's for him that worketh not. Is that Romans, I think? I'm not sure. But that I'm telling you that so that you can put it together. Him that worketh not, but believes. Okay? So the ones not working. For him that isn't working. For him that worketh not. So he's not working, but what is he doing? He's believing. That tells me right there that belief is not a work. I keep getting things. Heard. My pastor says that if you believe that it's a, it's just ridiculous. It's a Calvinistic argument to get you to say that you didn't have any choice. God made you believe. I, I don't believe that at all. That is not my view. I think God has foreknowledge. The elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So, um, no. If you're a Calvinist, I love you. You're my brother, sister in Christ. But I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. That's Jesus. He justifies the ungodly. See, people don't like that part. That God justifies the ungodly. Um, beloved Pastor Dec uh, Dr. Ralph Yankee Arnold says, Just as if I had never sinned. Justified. Justified never sinned. You're justified. You're declared righteous. Okay? His faith is counted for righteousness. That is imputed righteousness. 
because you believed God says you are righteous. You're taking God at his word. You're saying he promised it. I believe him. It's done. God says that faith is counted for righteousness. And why do you have to not be working? Well, if you're believing that it's done, why would you be working to try to get something you already have? You wouldn't. That's why it's for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. See, you don't have to try to be godly before he'll save you. He makes you of God. It's not you're cleaning yourself up so he'll accept you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he justifies the ungodly. And our faith is counted for righteousness. And this is God's perfect righteousness. See, the enemy can accuse me. He can accuse you, but he cannot accuse Jesus. Jesus said, which one of you commits me of sin? Hmm? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? No, nobody. Nobody. Now, they had some false witnesses saying this, that, and the other. But even the Pharisees were like, this is ridiculous. Since they knew that was a lie. There was no sin. Even when the high priest called him blasphemous because he called himself the son of God. He wasn't sinning. He was telling the truth. The priest was sinning by not believing him and calling him a liar. So, the righteousness he gives us is perfect. And it will protect our hearts, our vulnerable place. The bosom here is a very sacred and intimate place. Like when John laid on Jesus' bosom. It protects the major life, the, the organs necessary for life. And so we should have our uh, loins girt about with truth. That is the uh, symbol, a metaphor for uh, preparation. They always be prepared. They would tuck their tunic in, right? So they'd be ready. Readiness and preparation. And now we see the breastplate of righteousness. And it protects everything that's vital. Protects from condemnation and from worry and from fear. 2 Timothy 2.22. This is practical. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So, once we're saved and we have God's perfect righteousness, he implores us to give to the poor, to pray for the sick, to preach the gospel, to study his word, to be always in prayer, to be a light to to the world to follow righteousness don't do anything that would offend or bring the church or the lord a bad name we are ambassadors for christ we don't even want to give the appearance of evil so you're a young lady he's a young man you're both unmarried you're very innocent you did nothing wrong you were just doing late accounting work for the ministry together till 11 30 and you were the only ones there and nobody did anything wrong but it sure looks like you might uh You see? Don't even give. And it makes sure somebody's there. Lest somebody wicked in their own mind. In their filthy thinking. Use it to make you look less than who you are. And I know that's not fair. But we're told to not even allow the appearance of evil. So, I want it to be clear on that. It's important. It is important. But for our own faith to protect us, because this armor is about protecting our faith and standing strong and fighting against spiritual weapons and the spiritual enemy. 
with that, it's about protecting us. So we want to put this armor on. We already have it. We're complete in Christ. We don't have to ask for it. We have it. Just put it on. And know that we are standing in God's perfect righteousness. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And that might is not, um, if maybe, if you, no, might means so it's therefore possible. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So it could be possible that we would. The only condition is believing. To make it possible for us. For all our sin to come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord is that not great news you guys and I don't care how many times we tell this gospel message it never gets old okay you guys we will get to the third item of armor in our spiritual warfare and uniform or weaponry and I will see you guys oh what is that I will see you guys at the um Revelation study, the four views of Revelation study on CES tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, is it not? No, 9.30. 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 6, is it 6.30? Uh, Pacific. God bless you. Have a great day.